Hi everybody and welcome back for some more Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And today we're on Chapter 16, The Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompas, everyone said at once. Oompa Loompas? Imported direct from Loompa Land, said Mr. Wonka proudly. There's no such place, said Mrs. Salt. Excuse me, my dear lady, but Mr. Wonka, cried Mrs. Salt, I am a teacher of geography. Oh, then you'll know all about it, said Mr. Wonka. And oh, what a terrible country it is. Nothing but thick jungles infested by the most dangerous beasts in the entire world. Hornswogglers and snozwangers and those terrible wicked wangdoodles. A wangdoodle would eat ten Oompa Loompas for breakfast and come galloping back for a second helping. But I went out there. I found the little Oompa Loompas living in tree houses. They had to leave it. They had to live in tree houses to escape from the wang doodles and the horn swagglers and the snozwangers, and they were practically starving to death. They were living on green caterpillars, and the caterpillars tasted revolting. And the Oompa Loompas spent every moment of their days climbing through the treetops, looking for other things to mash up with the caterpillars to make them taste better. Red beetles, for instance, and eucalyptus leaves, and the bark of bung bung trees, and all of them beastly, but not quite so beastly as the caterpillars. Poor little Oompa Loompas. The one food they had longed for more than any other was the cacao bean. But they couldn't get it. An Oompa Loompa was lucky if he found three or four cacao beans in a year. But oh, how they craved them. They used to dream about cacao beans all night and talk about them all day. He had to only mention the word cacao to an Oompa Loompa, and he would start dribbling at the mouth. The cacao bean, Mr. Wonka continued, which grows on the cacao tree, happens to be the thing from which all chocolate is made. You can't make chocolate without the cacao bean. The cacao bean is chocolate. I myself use billions of cacao beans every week in this factory, and so, my dear children, as soon as I discovered that the Oompa Loompas were crazy for this particular food, I climbed up to their treehouse village and poked my head in through the door of the treehouse belonging to the leader of the tribe. The poor little fellow looked thin and starved and was sitting there trying to eat a bowl full of mashed-up green caterpillars without being sick. Look here, I said, speaking not in English, of course, but in Oompa Loompish. Look here, if you and all your people will come back to my country and live in my factory, you can all have all the cacao beans you want. I've got mountains of them in my storehouses. You can have cacao beans for every meal. You can gorge yourself silly on them. I'll even pay your wages in cacao beans if you wish. You really mean it? Asked the Oompa Loompa leader, leaping up from his chair. Of course I mean it, I said. And you can have chocolate as well. Chocolate tastes even better than cacao beans because it's got milk and sugar added. The little man gave a great whoop of joy and threw his bowl of mashed caterpillars right out of the treehouse window. It's a deal, he cried. Come on, let's go. So I shipped them all over here, every man, woman, and child in the Oompa Loompa tribe. It was easy. I smuggled them over in the large packing cases with holes in them, and they all got here safely. They're all wonderful workers. They all speak English now. They love dancing and music. They're always making up songs. I expect you'll hear a good deal of singing today coming from time to time. I must warn you, though, that they are rather mischievous. They like jokes. They still wear the same kind of clothes they wore in the jungle. They insist upon that. The men, as you can see for yourselves across the river, wear only deerskins, and the women wear leaves, and the children wear nothing at all. The women use fresh leaves every day. Daddy! shouted Veruca Salt, the girl who got everything she wanted. Daddy! I want an Oompa Loompa! I want you to get me an Oompa Loompa! I want an Oompa Loompa right away! I want to take it home with me! Go on, Daddy, get me an Oompa Loompa! Now, now, my pet, her father said to her. We mustn't interrupt, Mr. Wonka. But I want an Oompa Loompa, screamed Veruca. All right, Veruca, all right. But I can't get it for you this second. Please be patient. I'll see you have one before the day is out. Augustus, shouted Mrs. Gloop. Augustus, sweetheart, I don't think you'd better do that. Augustus Gloop, as you might have guessed, had quietly sneaked down to the edge of the river. and He was now kneeling on the riverbank, scooping hot melted chocolate into his mouth as fast as he could. Chapter 17. Augustus Gloop Goes Up the Pipe. When Mr. Wonka turned round and saw what Augustus Gloop was doing, he cried out, Oh no, please, Augustus, please, I beg of you not to do that. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Augustus, called out Mrs. Gloop, didn't you hear what the man said? Come away from that river at once. This stuff is terrific, said Augustus, taking not only the slightest taking not the slightest notice of his mother or Mr. Wonka. Oh boy, I need a bucket to drink it properly. Augustus, cried Mr. Wonka, hopping down, up and down and waggling his stick in the air. You must come away. You are dirtying my chocolate. Augustus, cried Mrs. Gloop. Augustus, cried Mr. Gloop. But Augustus was deaf to everything except the call of his enormous stomach. 
He was now lying full length on the ground with his head far out over the river, lapping up the chocolate like a dog. Augustus, shouted Mrs. Gloop, you'll be giving that nasty cold of yours to about a million people all over the country. Be careful, Augustus, shouted Mr. Gloop. You're leaning out too far. Mr. Gloop was absolutely right, for suddenly there was a shriek and then a splash into the river went Augustus Gloop, and in one second he had disappeared under the brown surface. Save him, cried Mrs. Gloop, going white in the face and waving her umbrella about. He'll drown. He can't swim. Save him. Save him. Good heavens, woman, said Mr. Gloop. I'm not diving in there. I can't. I've got my best suit on. Augustus Gloop's face came up again to the surface, painted brown with chocolate. Help! 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 He yelled. Fish me out! Don't just stand there, Mrs. Gloop screamed at Mr. Gloop. Do something! I am doing something said Mr. Gloop, who was now taking off his jacket and getting ready to dive into the chocolate. But while he was doing this, the wretched boy was being sucked closer and closer toward the mouth of one of the great pipes that was dangling down into the river. Then, all at once, the powerful suction took hold of him completely, and he was pulled under the surface and then into the mouth of the pipe. There's Augustus in the chocolate river. The crowd of the river, on the riverbank waited breathlessly to see where he would come out. There he goes, somebody shouted, pointing upwards. And sure enough, because the pipe was made of glass, Augustus Gloop could be clearly seen shooting up inside it, head first, like a torpedo. Help! Police! screamed Mrs. Gloop. Augustus, come back at once! Where are you going? It's a wonder to me, said Mr. Gloop, how that pipe is even big enough for him to go through it. It isn't big enough, said Charlie Bucket. Oh dear, look, he's slowing down. So he is, said Grandpa Joe. He's going to stick. I think he is, said Grandpa Joe. By golly, he has gotten stuck, said Charlie. It's his stomach that's done it, said Mr. Gloop. He's blocked the whole pipe, said Grandpa Joe. Smash the pipe, yelled Mrs. Gloop, still waving her umbrella. Augustus, come out of there at once. The watchers below could see the chocolate swishing around the boy in the pipe, and they could see it building up behind him in a solid mass, pushing against the blockage. The pressure was terrific. Something had to give. Something did give, and that something was Augustus. Woof! Up he shot again like a bullet in the barrel of a gun. He's disappeared, yelled Mrs. Gloop. Where does that pipe go to? Quick, call the fire brigade! Keep calm, cried Mr. Wonka. Keep calm, my dear lady. Keep calm. There's no danger. No danger whatsoever. Augustus has gone on a little journey, that's all. It's most intriguing, this little journey. But he'll come out of it just fine. You wait and see. How can he possibly come out just fine, snapped Mrs. Gloop. He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds. Impossible, cried Mr. Wonka. Unthinkable, inconceivable, absurd. He can never be made into marshmallows. And why not, may I ask, shouted Mrs. Gloop. Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room, Mr. Wonka answered. It doesn't go anywhere near it. That pipe, the one Augustus went up, happens to lead directly to the room where I make a most delicious kind of strawberry-flavored chocolate-coated fudge. Then he'll be made into strawberry-flavored chocolate-coated fudge, screamed Mrs. Gloop. My poor Augustus, they'll be selling him by the pound all over the country tomorrow morning. Quite right, said Mr. Gloop. I know I'm right, said Mrs. Gloop. It's beyond a joke, said Mr. Gloop. Mr. Wonka doesn't seem to think so, cried Mrs. Gloop. Just look at him. He's laughing his head off. How dare you laugh like that when my boy's just gone up the pipe, you monster? She shrieked, pointing her umbrella at Mr. Wonka as though she were going to run him through. You think it's a joke, do you? You think it's that sucking my boy up into your fudge room like that is one great big colossal joke? He'll be perfectly safe, said Mr. Wonka, giggling slightly. He'll be chocolate fudge, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Never cried Mr. Wonka. Of course he will, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. I wouldn't allow it, cried Mr. Wonka. And why not, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Because the taste would be terrible, said Mr. Wonka. Just imagine it, Augustus-flavored chocolate-coated gloop. No one would want to buy it. Well, they most certainly would, cried Mrs. Gloop, indignantly. I don't want to think about it, said Mr. Gloop. Nor do I, said Mr. Wonka. And I do promise you, madam, that your darling boy is perfectly safe. If he's perfectly safe, then where is he? snapped Mrs. Gloop. Lead me to him this instant. Mr. Wonka turned around and clicked his fingers sharply. Three times. Immediately, an Oompa Loompa appeared as if from nowhere and stood beside him. The Oompa Loompa bowed and smiled, showing beautiful white teeth. His, son was ro his skin was rosy white, his long hair was golden brown, and on top of his head came just above the height 
and the top of his head came just above the height of Mr. Wonka's knee. He wore the usual deer skin slung over his shoulder. Now listen to me, said Mr. Wonka, looking down at the tiny man. I want you to take Mr. and Mrs. Gloop up to the fudge room and help them find their son, Augustus. He's just gone up the pipe. The Oompa Loompa took one look at Mrs. Gloop and exploded into peals of laughter. Oh, do be quiet, said Mr. Wonka. Control yourself. Pull yourself together. Mrs. Gloop doesn't think this is funny at all. You can say that again, said Mrs. Gloop. Go straight to the fudge room, Mr. Wonka said to the Oompa Loompa, and when you get there, take a long stick and start poking around inside the big chocolate mixing barrel. I'm almost certain you'll find him there. There's Mr. Wonka and Mrs. Gloop and the Oompa Loompa. But you'd better look sharp. You'll have to hurry. If you leave him in the chocolate mixing barrel too long, he's liable to get poured out into the fudge boiler, and that would really be a disaster, wouldn't it? My fudge would become quite uneatable. Mr. Mrs. Gloop let out a shriek of fury. I'm joking, said Mr. Wonka, giggling madly behind his beard. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Mrs. Gloop and Mr. Gloop. Goodbye, goodbye. I'll see you later. As Mr. and Mrs. Gloop and their tiny escort hurried away, the five Loompa Loompas on the far side of the river suddenly began hopping and dancing about and beating wildly upon a number of very small drums. Augustus Gloop, they chanted. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. Grandpa, cried Charlie. Listen to them, Grandpa. What are they doing? Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe. I think they're going to sing us a song. Augustus Gloop, chanted the Oompa Loompas. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, the great big greedy nincompoop. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guzzle and feed and feast on everything he wanted to? Great Scott, it simply wouldn't do. However long this pig might live, we're positive he'd never give even the smallest bit of fun or happiness to anyone. So what we do in cases such as this, we use the gentle touch and carefully we take the brat and turn him into something that will give great pleasure to us all. A doll, for instance, or a ball, or marbles, or a rocking horse, but this revolting boy, of course, was so unutterably vile, so greedy, foul, and infantile, he left a most disgusting taste inside our mouths, and so in haste we chose a thing that, come what may, would take the nasty taste away. Come on, we cried, the time is right to send him shooting up the pipe. He has to go, it has to be. And very soon he's going to see inside the room to which he's gone some funny things that are going on. But don't, dear children, be alarmed. Augustus Gloop will not be harmed, although, of course, we must admit he will be altered quite a bit. He'll be quite changed from what he's been when he goes through the fudge machine. Slowly, the wheels go round and round. The cogs begin to grind and pound. A hundred knives to slice, slice, slice. We'll add some sugar, cream, and spice. We'll boil him for a minute more until we're absolutely sure that all the greed and all the gall is boiled away for once and all. Then out he comes. And now, by grace, a miracle has taken place. This boy who only just before was loathed by men from shore to shore. This greedy brute, this louse's ear, is loved by people everywhere. For who could hate or bear a grudge against a luscious bit of fudge? I told you they loved singing, cried Mr. Wonka. Aren't they delightful? Aren't they charming? But you mustn't believe a word they say. It's all nonsense, every bit of it. Are the Oompa Loompas really joking, Grandpa? asked Charlie. Of course they're joking, answered Grandpa Joe. They must be joking. At least I hope they're joking. Don't you? <laughs>